whole generation if we, as his people, remembered every day the good news. Well, congratulations once again to our campus missionaries for a very successful campus summit. And if you are one of those who participated, one of the 500 students who participated, we hope that you were really inspired, that you really got equipped, and that you were empowered to share the goodness of God in such a time as this. And so again, we hope that you have been blessed with that. Now again, good morning. Welcome to our 10 a.m. online worship service. My name is Christian. And I'm one of the pastors here of the church. I want to thank our hardworking, our very empowering, and as well as good-looking senior pastor for the opportunity to be able to preach today. Uh, thank you, Pastor Paolo. Uh, thank you for being part of your leadership team. And uh, it's such an honor to uh, follow after you. And so again, thank you. Uh, welcome to our 10 a.m. online service. Today, we are actually um, continuing our series called The Gospel Explained. Would you imagine? Can you imagine that we're already on our 11th week and we are more than halfway through this. We're going to have a few more weeks here. I think about 10 weeks. And so you might be wondering, why are we investing 11? Why have we invested 11 weeks? And why are we investing 10 more weeks in this? Why do we need to understand this gospel? Why do we need to have a good grasp of what Jesus stand, stood for and what he has done for us. And why do we need to understand it today? To answer that, I want to read from a quote, you know, uh, made by Tim Keller. And he said this, We never get beyond the gospel in our Christian life to something more advanced. The gospel is not the first step in a stairway of truths. Rather, it is more like a hub in a wheel of truth. The gospel is not just the ABCs or the foundations of Christianity, but the A to Z of Christianity. The gospel is not just the minimum required doctrine necessary to enter the kingdom, but the way we make progress in the kingdom. It is the solution to each problem, the key to each closed door, the power through every barrier. Now, if that is how weighty the gospel is, how many of you know we need? to understand it. We need to have time to wrestle with it so that we can comprehend it and also apply it and allow it to transform us. Today, our text is in Romans chapter 7. In Romans chapter 7, I'd like for us to open up our Bibles there in our homes. If you are using an app, um, please open uh, Romans 7. We'll be reading from verse 14 all the way to 25 today. Let me read what the Bible says in Romans 7, 14. It says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh sold under sin. For I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law and that is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being. But I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Verse 25, thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. Father in heaven, we thank you for this moment. Thank you for this time and thank you for your gospel. God, as we glean, Lord, today, as we learn, as we try to understand what this means, Lord, Romans chapter 7, thank you that you have the power not just to inform us, but may your power be experienced by us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
In the past two weeks, Pastor Paulo um, explained to us, uh, quoting from Romans chapter 6, about this facet of the gospel, another implication of the gospel in our lives, and that is sanctification. When we say sanctification, it means it is the progressive work of God in our lives that makes us increasingly, please take note of those words, progressive work of God in our lives that makes us increasingly free from sin and become more like Christ. And so sanctification is, if this is Christ's likeness, if this is who God wants us to be, and we are still here, Christ's likeness is the process of us being brought nearer and nearer and nearer and nearer to the image of Christ. Christ likeness is God's desire for us. Yes, Romans chapter 1 uh, all the way to 5 uh, mentioned to us that we have been justified uh, because of what Christ has done, meaning we are already forgiven, meaning we are already assured of our eternal you know, uh, destination, assured of our eternal life with God. And we are assured of this access that we have with God and we are in right standing with Him. But Romans chapter 6, Paul also enumerates that is not all about the gospel. Here we have this sanctification, this will of the Lord, so that he can transform us more into the image of his son. The grace that saves us is the same grace that can transform us. This gospel that allowed us to have a right standing with the Lord is the same gospel that will see that transformation of us becoming more like Jesus Christ. I like how uh, Max Lucado um, said it. He said, God loves you just the way you are, but he refuses to leave you that way. He wants you to to be just like Jesus. And Paul um, reiterated that in Romans chapter 7, in the beginning part in uh, verse 6, in the New Living Translation, it says, but now we have been released from the law, for we died to it and are no longer captive to its power. Now we can serve God. Not in the old way of obeying the letter of the law, but in the new way of living in the Spirit. And so we are not just called to be sanctified. We are also empowered by by God's grace to be sanctified. But you know what I like also with Paul's explanation of the gospel in Romans is that he did not leave the reality of sanctification, how it is seen in the lives of people, you know, just as a footnote. Hindi niya sinabi, ah, by, by, by the way, ah, mahirap pala yan. He was very upfront. He specifically said in Romans chapter 7, in the, in the verses that we have read, it's sanctification, yes, there's grace. It means Christ-likeness. And if this is the gap that you still have to travel, there is grace for that, even though it is hard. Yes, it is a battle. It may take time. It can be messy. It will entail us swallowing our pride. It will entail us opening up our lives to know to the people that God wants us to speak into our lives. It will entail us, you know, enduring and uh, waiting for certain aspects of our lives to change. But God is saying there's grace. A few days ago, uh, my family and I watched this movie online, uh, Greyhound. I don't know if you've already seen it. It's available online, and this is the story of a battleship that was tasked to guard a fleet of merchant ships carrying personnel and um, supplies from the United States to England in World War II. And so since that was the setting, obviously, as they traveled and crossed the Atlantic, they were expecting enemies. And I can remember, I can still remember the first battle that they had, because there were several submarines that were trying, whose goal was to sink all the fleet and all the, uh, the warships uh, escorting the fleet of merchant ships. You know, I remember the first time that they, were, they detected a submarine, an enemy submarine, and the alarm went off, you know, in the ship. And someone was announcing, prepare for battle. Get ready, you know, go to your battle stations. This is not a drill. And then I remember the captain played by Tom Hanks. He said this, this is the captain. We are close to our target. It means, ito na yon, we are close to this battle. You're, do your duties well. This is what we have trained for. And I can remember the faces of those 
uh, you know, those soldiers, those Navy personnel, and they were trying to focus. They were trying to prepare and psych themselves for the battle at hand. And I can see a similarity with what Paul was actually trying to accomplish in Romans chapter 7. He was saying, yes, the promise of sanctification is this, but get ready for battle. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be a walk in the park, but the grace of God is with you and you will be there and he will be with you every step of the way. It's going to be messy. It's going to be, it's going to swallow you. You're going to have to swallow your pride at times and you're going to humble yourself. But you know what? The grace of God is there for us. Now, I hope that just as much as you know, um, Tom Hanks crew was prepared when he announced that. I hope that we would also embrace this message of Paul for us because if there's one main lesson in this uh, segment of Romans 7 is that Paul wants us to be aware of our internal hostility between our old self and our new self, between the old ways of living that we have, the old habits, the generations or the, the years of bad habits that we have accumulated versus the new nature that God has in us. Those two two natures are at war inside of us. And at at times it's messy, at times it's difficult, but but he is saying, be aware, but without surrendering to its difficulty. Now, why is that important? Why is it important that we need to be aware and not surrender? A few weeks ago, we were counseling a couple in church and they were saying, you know, they've been having this difficulty, this struggle um, as a couple. And it seems like they're not moving forward. It's getting, it's paulit-ulit lang. And because of that, one of them said, they were, you know, Christiano ba talaga kami? Am, am I really a Christian? And, you know, when we don't understand the reality of sanctification, that it really is a battle, sometimes it can cause us to question our identity. And to question, you know, the grace of God in us. And to question, you know, uh, the work of God in us. The other side of this, if we are not aware of this, is we will not be ready for the battle. You see, if we think that Christianity is a bubble and everything will, you know, just instantly disappear. That when you, the moment that you surrender your life to Jesus Christ, lahat ng problema o mawala na, ah, that's, that's hard. Because when the robber meets the road, so to speak, what are you going to do? When you encounter opposition, when you encounter temptation, when you encounter condemnation, when you encounter the schemes of the enemy, how will you persevere now? Some people quit because of that, thinking that that's who they really are. Thinking that, hey, ito talaga ako eh. Ito na talaga yung identity ko. I will just surrender to it and allow God's grace to, you know, bahala na si Lord. But you know what? Even though that is your sinful proclivity, it does not define your identity. Because God has given you a new life. God has given you a new identity. And He is in the process of conforming you to the image of His Son. Are you ready for it? Are you up for it? This is a battle, folks. This is, a, this is messy. This takes time. But God's grace is with us. And so, how do we now position ourselves in light of that truth? How do we respond? What action should we take so that we can embrace that transforming grace of the Lord in our lives. Three quick um, points and observations that I want to share with you from the example of the Apostle Paul. Number one is the importance of being responsible. What do I mean by that? In verse 14, it says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh sold under sin. For I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. In those few verses alone, several times uh, was, were the words, I and my own were repeated. Paul recognized that there was a battle. Paul recognized that there was a conflict in him. But he also recognized he is also responsible over that. In order for us to change, we cannot change what we're not aware of. And we cannot change what we will not be responsible of. I know it's easy to blame shift. I know it's easy to point our finger to another person or family. But genuine change and transformation, we need to be like Paul. Recognize we also have our faults in this. And take ownership 
of it. See, one example in the Bible, um, Psalm 51, the psalm that was made uh, by King David as a response to prophet, the prophet Nathan confronting him because of his sin with Bathsheba. This was his response. He said, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my, there you go again, my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. You know, he could have easily pointed the finger at Bathsheba. He could have said, hey, kundangan ba naman kasing naligo itong babaeng to eh? Sa, tangha, sa kalagitnaan ng tanghali, das hindi man lang naligo doon sa baba ng bahay nila, naligo pa doon sa ibubong ng bahay nila. Tao lang ako. Nagkakamali rin. He could have said that. But instead of saying that, he recognized his fault. And he took ownership. This is my mistake. This is my sin. This is my transgression. This is my iniquity. It is so hard actually to say sorry. One of the hardest things that we can do or that we do is to actually apologize, right? To admit before God that we are wrong is also hard. To admit to our loved ones is very hard as well. And so one of the things that we have a hard time doing is that, admitting our mistakes. But we need to. I know we are all products of um, the generations before us. We are the summation of what is happening in our country, in our environment, with our loved ones, with our relatives, how we were brought up, our education system. All of these things accumulated. We are the products of that. We may be the product of our past, but we don't have to be prisoners of it. God wants us to grow. God wants us to be free. In fact, that's the very reason why Christ came here in the first place, not to condone our sin, not to tolerate sin, but actually to set people from sin and to make us more like Him. But the gateway to that, taking responsibility. It's taking ownership. It's being humble before the Lord and asking for His grace. David also said in Psalm 32, it says in verse 3, When I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away, and I, and I groaned all day long. Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. Finally, I confessed my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt and said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord. And you forgave me all guilt. All my guilt is gone. It is hard. Humbling, but preferable and pleasurable because our relationship with God grows deeper and we become more like His Son. The second posture of the Apostle Paul here um, is he was very vulnerable. Verse 18, continuing from the verse, he says, For I know that nothing dwells in me that is in, the, in my flesh, for I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Some Bible experts think that um, this is not really the Apostle Paul's personal experience at the moment of his writing. They were saying that he could be doing an intellectual exercise, thinking what could be what uh, the, the turmoil inside a person who's not yet regenerated or is not yet a believer of Jesus Christ. They were saying that that could not be Paul because he's already the apostle. He's already the prophet. He, uh, sorry, not prophet, but he's already the church planter. He's the prolific teacher. He could not have been in that situation. But then there are also a lot of good uh, Bible experts who would say, actually, it was the apostle Paul. If you would consider the, 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 the pronouns that he used, he used I and my and my own and the tense that he used. It speaks about what he was currently going through. And can you imagine how liberating it is to hear an apostle, a church planter, a pastor, a prolific gospel writer admit that he is still a work in progress? That gives us mere mortals the grace, right? Mere mortals the, the faith and hope. Wow, 
if he was going through that, he can identify with me. And if he is saying that grace is possible for me to be sanctified, then, then I am going to believe that. The Bible says in James 5 verse 16, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is work. I like it that the Bible says when we confess to God, we are forgiven. But when we confess to one another, we experience healing. God's plan for us to grow and grow and grow to be more like Him involves vulnerability, involves accountability. And, you know, growing up as a Christian, I've been, a, I've, I've been following Christ for about 23 years now, and I can say that I have struggled in a lot of ways um, in those 23 years. But I am so grateful that I did not have to face those battles alone. I was, I'm so grateful that I have Pastor Manny Carlos who spoke into my life. I'm so grateful for Carlos Antonio for, you know, patiently speaking into my life as well. I'm so grateful for Pastor Paolo for the patience that they have, Jen and, uh, Jen and Pastor Paolo, patience in helping me and my wife go through, sort through some uh, problems that we have. See, church, God does not want us to face our battles alone. God has brought us into family so that we can fight those battles with family. That's the desire of God. In fact, there's this powerful quote that I want to give you from Jim Harrington's book, The Leader's Journey. He said, to increasingly embody the gospel, we develop a lifestyle of telling the truth to ourselves into a community of grace and truth about places where our lives do not align with the teachings of Jesus. Then we patiently develop reflective life that allows us to name the places where we automatically like blinking or breathing, disobey the teachings of Jesus. We learn to disrupt those automatic habits and with practice over time, replace them with the habits that do align with Jesus' teaching. Telling the truth to ourselves and to a community of grace. That's how God wants us to be sanctified. And so my question for us, do you have people around you who are helping you to grow? Do you have people who can speak into your life? Not just the things that you want to hear, but the things that you need to hear. Do we have people in church who know not just our victories, but also our difficulties? God does not want us to fight alone. Proverbs 27, 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Do you have that friend in church? If you are new in church and you've been watching for several weeks now, or maybe this is your first time, we're so glad that you can be with us and that you're learning. But can I just tell you, God's desire for us is not just to be consumers of content. God wants us to be planted in relational connections, in discipleship, in spiritual family so that we can grow. And so if you don't have those friends yet, and if you're looking and if you're wanting for yourself to grow more into the image of Christ. You've tried it on your own, but you don't have the power. Could it be that God's grace for you at this season is so that you would fight with people who will help you grow in maturity? And if that is you, can we ask you to reach out to us? Here's my email. Please email me. You can email Pastor Paolo. You can email Brandel. You can email Lowell. We would happily connect you to a family who will help you fight your battles. And you know what? The good thing about these battles is there is victory in this. It may take time. It may be messy. It may take us being humble and vulnerable. But you know what? The promise of God says God's grace will finish what he started in us. And that is why the third posture of the Apostle Paul here is that he was very hopeful. In Romans chapter 7, uh, 24 to 25 in the New Living Translation, it says, Oh, what a miserable person am I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? And then he said this, Thank God. Can you say that? Thank God. Type it there. Thank God. Thank God. The answer is in Christ Jesus or Jesus Christ our Lord. I like that. Thank God. It is a powerful prayer. Thanking God gives is the gateway for us to be humble. And we know what the Bible says when we are humble. The, hum, the humility, the Bible says, is the gateway to access, is the access to grace. And if you need God's grace to be transformed, guess what? Even though you're still tr struggling, even though you're still having a hard time with those things, thank the Lord because you know God's grace is there. 
And you know what? I like it also that the answer is, it says there the answer is. He did not say the answer will be, the answer could be, the answer might be, but it says the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. There's a power in that declaration that he gave that sometimes even though we don't see it yet, sometimes we are still struggling. The old life and the new life is still a struggle in us. Thank God because we know one day we will see the victory over this one. Thank God we know our hurdles, our, our, I know, our, 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 um, our struggles will be, you know, we will be victorious progressively over those struggles. Thank God that one day you will see your addictions. You will be more victorious over that. Your relational dysfunctions, you will be more victorious over that. Your anger, you will be more victorious over that. Your patience, you will be more victorious over that. Your struggle with lust, God will give you the grace to be more victorious over that. Your struggle with finances, God will give you the grace to get over that, so to speak. Because God's grace is there and He is saying Jesus is the answer. Next week, don't miss this because we're going to, go, we're going to be looking at Romans chapter 8. And we're going to be looking at that power available for us. But as we end today, I would like for us to be inspired and be encouraged with this testimony. One of our leaders, um, James Raimundo, and he will tell us how God's grace helped him to change. Uh, thank you for this opportunity, Pastor Chris. Well, uh, to give background, no, uh, I work uh, as a pharmaceutical company as a medical representative. So, as a sales, of course, you're really exposed to different kinds of uh, customers, different kinds of activities. And prior to being born again, uh, mga sales is kilala yan na mga bolero and madaling mag uh, come up with something like a lie if you, you cannot commit to certain things. But when uh, God accepted me as his uh, son 2006, it was 14 years ago, binago niya ako doon. Uh, God changed me in that area. When my victory group leader shared about uh, God is giving us a new spirit and then I should uh, honor or please God in the things that I do. Gradually, I, I, I get conscious na as a follower of Christ. Na it's not pleasing to God that I flatter these clients with words. And it's written in Proverbs also about uh, flattery words. So it's, it's not pleasing to God. Slowly, I stopped it. Until now, na it's, it changed me. Before, it was uh, really automatic for me to give white light but now it's different it's different and i hold on to that word uh, in romans chapter 12 verse 2 na, do not conform uh, to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of my of your mind so before before christ my standard was to please people my standard was the world but my standard was what i see around me but when that verse uh, hit me and then god Changed me, gave me a new heart. Totally, na iba yung mindset ko. I'm not really after what the world dictates, but what does God, God's word dictate? I thank God for His word. I thank God on how He changed me. And but still, of course, I'm still a work in progress. Uh, I, I can say that I'm already perfect, but it's a good thing that uh, the Holy Spirit in us uh, convicts the sales in a bar, and then I need to host certain clients. Because this is the way. This is what the world dictates. Then I just share it to my Victor. But he didn't condemn me. He said, oh, okay. So again, uh, let me pray for you. Then at the back of my mind, hmm, you cannot do anything because it's what how the world works. But I realized uh, my Victor Group leader was really praying for me because the following year, our company suddenly stopped uh, pinagbawalan na kami ng mga ganong klaseng activities. So, I was surprised. Wow. It's really God who really will uh, make a way for you to remove you from that place of uh, maybe temptation or sin. And I really admire my victory group leader and even my mem the other members of the group na they never condemned me but they prayed for me. They were uh, 
hindi nila sinasabi, hindi kaya mo yan, that's what you're doing more. But just, sige, let's pray. And it's, it's really God is working. God, uh, God is using these men, these couples to encourage. At the same time, I look to them. And one day, I, I just, uh, mod, they just modeled the way. And then now, I'm leading my own group. And what I learned from them, I also uh, apply to the people that I'm leading. Thank you so much, James, for that testimony. And I want to end by reading this scripture. Bible says in Philippians 1 verse 6, I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for you are good. Thank you that we can be assured that He who began a good work in us will bring it to completion. We may be struggling now. We may be fumbling every now and then. But Lord, thank you. We will see victory in this as well. You know, as we are in the presence of God, I'd like for us to, at this moment, give Him an opportunity to minister. God's grace is here. And the Bible says, He who is humble receives the grace of the Lord. Would you be responsible right now? Would you be vulnerable before God in saying, in knowing, in admitting certain sin patterns or certain sins that we want to just surrender at the feet of Christ? If that is you, just in your mind, just picture Christ and just tell Him, Lord, I'm sorry. These are my sins. They broke your heart. And today, I choose to repent. Today, I receive your grace to be transformed in this area. Help me to walk the walk of faith, to fight the good fight of faith. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to challenge us. Sometimes being vulnerable and being accountable, it gets harder when you're, the older you get as a Christian. But if you have been walking as a Christian for quite some time now, maybe God is opening up areas in our lives that we need to open up to others. Please don't worry. We will not judge you. God is not after our usefulness. He is after our holiness. And part of that is if we need to open up to a pastor or a victory group leader, please do so. God's grace will be there. Amen. God bless you. We hope that you have encountered the Lord today. We hope that you would be blessed. May God's peace, God's grace, God's strength, may His protection, may His healing and His provision be upon us all. In Jesus' name.